here we go hello so i'm gonna say hello again to um to everybody that is following this uh, webinar and uh, if you're here thanks for being here and if you're watching it after thank you for watching it now and uh, i'm going to start straight away with a part that is uh, a bit more um theoric today theoric okay so this is um the part related to the body music for children so let me see and if i do play okay that's it there we are so body music for children it's my project is one of my main projects and um, um i always really specific that is for children because when we work with adults um we can do a lot of different things but when we work with children we need to be very careful that we are actually taking in consideration many more aspects of the work uh, that we do so today we're going to talk about some steps that are not many but they are very useful to have in the background of our mind when we're teaching and those um, are helpful to create a body music activity or to simply teach a body music activity to children oh good this is not working perfect oh yeah there we go okay <laughs> so yeah so what are the principal goals of a body music activity this is what i was basically saying before when we are teaching children um of course we can just think about music and that's totally fine we can simply work on musical skills singing rhythm uh, but through body music we can actually do much more because when we work with the body we are um, involving the whole whole process the whole brain as well okay i'm gonna speak a bit slower beer girl so potentially it's easier for you to follow us so the principal goals are when in my kind of body music activities the first thing that i really want is that all the participants are included in the activity so we can think and we can structure an activity where all the participants are included then i want to create space for creativity where kids can express themselves through composition and improvisation and we're going to see this today in the uh, activity that i'm going to teach you at the end of the, of the pdfs of the powerpoint and i want them to learn between each other okay so i really want them to be able to um to have the so-called peer learning yeah so when they learn not only from me as a teacher but they learn also from each other and that's a, a very good thing for them and then i want to motivate the students to continue the research and the personal study of body percussion so I want them to feel so motivated that when they are, you know, practicing body music is actually something that they want to do at home. Uh, some of them start doing the exercises that they do with me, with their parents, with their brothers. There is a, a spread of mouth, so, you know, the whole family is included, but also sometimes children of different classes that are friends start sharing the activities and then you find basically the whole school playing the activities that you're teaching this is what happened in one of the schools in italy where i was teaching then i want them to uh, have a possibility to develop uh, skills as cooperation co um, so teamwork in general okay and then they, they can go through a process of inter and intrapersonal relationships so when we work in group we always have this exchange, continuous exchange in, from what is outside us and what is inside us, okay? So I am here in the middle of a group, I'm making music, what is happening to me? How do I feel? Um, how do I feel in relation to the other people? How do I feel in relation to myself and my own expectations? So this is a whole process that always go on. Um, when children are making music in general but with body music it's even more because the, bo the body is very very involved and then of course i can develop i can support the development of the coordination musical skills and executive functions so the executive functions just to say very very quickly are cognitive skills that are in the uh, frontal lobe and that basically um, help the human beings to to be the people that we are okay so there are attention cognitive planning inhibition of impulses turn taking um 
effect flexibility, cognitive flexibility. So all of these are super important um, skills and, and cognitive skills, cognitive functions that are uh, developing with the children through language as well, of course, from when they are very little and they continue uh, through our life, okay? Yeah, exactly. So sometimes it just got stuck. Ah, okay, I have to touch like that. Right. So what are the preliminary aspects when I decide to create an activity of body percussion? I want to observe my group. Okay, so um, I, of course, when I get into a class, I have in, in my bag, in my Mary Poppins bag, I have a lot of activities that are already ready. But I always choose to start with a very simple warm up to, to be able to see the group, to be able to observe how the group is feeling that day. Even if it's a group that I know very well, I always give them the possibility through a very simple game to show me what they're feeling that day. Okay, so the first thing is the observation. I observe a group and then I decide what way I wanna go with my activity. So I have many activities in my bags and I go in one direction or I go in another. So observation is the most important thing to be able to really deliver the activity that that group needs on that specific day. So in my way of teaching, I do have a plan, but that plan can change continuously. Even if I'm going to a school, to a mainstream school, I have some ideas, but I'm also ready to change them if I need, if I realize that the group is not able to listen or it's a different type of group, okay? Now, no copy and paste. This is very important for me. It means that whenever I go to a course, whenever I, I attend a training course, um, I can take the activities that I learn, the exercises, like today with me, for example, we're gonna learn something. But if I just decided to copy it and use it tomorrow morning with my group without making any changes in the activities, the activities potentially is not gonna work. So there are there is no perfect exercise no perfect activity if we don't customize it on our students. And this is also another important thing because I can use the same activity and change it through the ages. And this is exactly what we've seen during this week of mini guide. We have used the same song with many different ages, but changing it according to the, the needs of the students and their development. So with activities that I'm going to give you today is exactly the same thing. We start with a song and then we understand how to use it with different ages, okay? So the idea is always this, take an activity, take an idea and then change it. <laughs> and then the last point is that we learn by mistakes. So as teachers, unfortunately for our students, we need to try and see what it works. So we get better teachers by teaching. There's no other way to become a very good teacher. We can go to internships, we can take courses, but the reality is that then we have to try with our students and see if the things works. So we can make mistakes, but that is not a problem. Those mistakes, we can take them, modify them, uh, use that idea, idea that maybe comes out of a mistake and use it with another group Okay, so the process of learning is a process of learning that involves us and the students at the same time. It, it's a continuous thing that goes on through the years, okay? It's not that, okay, I'm a good teacher, now I feel I'm a good teacher and I'm just going to repeat this forever. <laughs> That's not gonna work because the children are changing, we are changing, so it's a continuous development through the years. Now. What are the steps to build a body music activity? Well, first of all, we have to remember that the movement is a tool for exploring and learning for children. So um, it's not just a way to feel the rhythm or you know, understanding the pulse of a song. No, 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 there is much more behind that, okay? Through a type of explorative movement and uh, um, how do you say? Yeah, children really discover a lot of things of themselves and a lot of things of the reality that is um, around them, okay? What we can say is that during my sessions with children and children with special needs, I have noticed that when exposed to the sounds of music, 
children tend to respond with movement, dance and free, free exploration. So this happens when you play something, when you put a song in your class, when you start playing, it happens that children naturally react to the music, to the movement. Okay, perfect, right? Oh, sorry, no, what happened now? I have to go back, yeah. So that's great, that happens naturally, but there are also some situations in, in which children are not producing uh, any type of um, response. And we're, we're, we're gonna see why together later. So in general, I have observed a wide, ra wide range of motor reactions from completely free of rhythmic, so children can just explore and move, you know, in a way that they are trying to, to explore the sounds, or they can already dance in a rhythmic mo uh, way. And sometimes they are already very structured, so for example, they already clap or stomp or do some body percussion, or they describe the sound that they are, that they are following, okay? So there are many different types of motor reactions to music and in most cases children seem to naturally incorporate the body into the perception of music so body and movement are a connection between perception and production first I perceive the sounds with my body I internalize it I understand it and then I can produce it okay now diversity of movement that is influenced by many factors. So yes, as I said, there are some situations where the involvement of the body, it's very natural, but this tendency to use the body as a, as a means of learning um, not only depends by the, uh, to the predisposition to music and the background of each, of each student. So of course, if you have a child that is uh, making music every week, that goes to musical classes every week, probably that child will react to music in a much more spontaneous way, okay? Or if there are kids, um, children of musicians, they might have a very natural response. But some other children um, go through a series of conditions that uh, when the kids, basically that growing come out much, much more clear. So if they don't have a musical background, you can definitely see that in the reaction of their body they might not be able to coordinate or they might not be able to keep the rhythm, okay? This is from the background. They can also potentially have some um, developmental difficulties or delays, and those, of course, influence as well the type of movement that they show us. But also, they're, sometimes they're just simply growing and they are feeling a bit more shy, okay? And when this happens, um, usually when they are starting being teenagers, body percussions can be, a, can be a bit complicated, okay? Because we are asking children to use their whole body in front of their friends. So with, when children are nine, 10, 11, 13, this type of age, it's very difficult for them to do body percussion completely relaxed. There is a little bit of a wall, okay, behind them in the beginning, uh, that we have to help them overcome. So when they feel relaxed, then they do body music without problems. But in the beginning, it's something a bit weird. It's something a bit strange. So we have to introduce body music in a very slow way through a lot of um, playful situations where there are challenges to resolve or even through a very long warm up sometimes, okay? Okay, so another point that I noticed that really helps in this sense is to study how we position the group in the space. So if the group is in circle and we are meeting children that are very shy or that don't want to move, well, the circle is not helping this happen to happen. So it's better to start with different type of positions. So they can play in couples, they can play in lines, or they can move freely, freely in the space. And if you're interested in this subject, I have a course that is just dedicated basically to this. It's a webinar of two hours, only dedicated to what type of positions of a group in the space facilitate and foster communication, inclusions, and teamwork. Right, having said that, as I said before also, at the, at the base of these type of activities, there must be playing or playfulness they need to, um, the intervention should be embedded in playing to facilitate learning and development. 
So when children have fun, even teenagers, when the teenagers are challenged and they are cognitively uh, challenged, then they participate much more. They feel engaged, they feel motivated. So our activities cannot be just, okay, let's learn this. Everybody repeat. It works for a bit, it works just for a little bit, but then children don't have fun, okay? So it's not something that actually um, will help them to, to participate continuously. Mm? And then we have the movement. So of course, in itself, it brings joy and well-being, thanks to the possibility of experimenting and making new discoveries. So the movement itself helps a lot the children to just feel, uh, you know, much, much more um, positive in, in usually. So children, oopsie, today I have this type of problem with it. <laughs> yeah, children explore the world around them and learn through social rules to social space and uh, to share social spaces. So when they are together, they and through our type of music and playfulness, acti playful activities, they also learn how to interact to each other and share the space of a class and in general, the um, development of social skills is really happening. Okay, so this type of playful mode of activity um, um, open, opens a privileged space for experimenting with the environment around them for personal and social growth. So they can develop self-esteem, respect for each other and responsibility, recognition and enhancement of diversity, solidarity in the group, altruism and cooperation. These are all things that can happen in our activities and we're going to see that later in the uh, game that I propose to you, to you today. Last thing is very important when we talk about the movement and as I said before, Move, uh, body percussion can help children to develop musicality and coordination, but there is much more, okay? Through this type of activities, they also have a sensory motor perception, which supports the development of space-time organization skills, okay? So let's read what's written. The type of motor exploration that takes place within a musical environment stimulates the knowledge of one's body, which develops the capacity for mental representation, the organization of sense motor skills, cognitive and affective evolution of the child. So a lot happens, yeah? When children use the body in the space through rhythm and music, they are developing the knowledge of themselves, the awareness of their whole body in the space. And these also will reflect in their understanding of what's surrounding them okay so the body representation process will be completed around eight and nine years of age and the child will relate to a space independent of their own body children will have an awareness and a representation a cognitive representation a mental representation of their body okay so the body music facilitates the development of a body scheme perception which is what i was saying now okay the body scheme perception is the process through which both the laterality, so right and left of the body, which are always involved in body percussion, and the ability to identify, yes, the right and the left of the other's body, are developed, okay? So this is called the body scheme perception. The resulting passage is the ability to project these relationships, so where is my left, where is my right? This awareness okay and the relationship between these things that are happening in my body children can as i said project them to the objects and the space that surrounds them and in this way they are developing symbolic functions okay and this also influences also other skills lies like orientation and movement movement in the space which is also connected to reading writing language drawing okay so the body movement and the body skin perception it really really supports also the development of other skills and for me this is something super important as teacher i cannot just think oh i want to develop my musicality children that's it i as as tiziana okay for me 
it's very important to support also the development of our skills in my, for my students. And here we go now to the last part of the uh, PDF of the PowerPoint, which is let's see together what are the steps to introduce easily a body percussion activity to the students. Okay, very, very easy. And this, it's good for children, teenagers and adults. Okay, so if you have a group of adults that have never done body percussion before, if you follow these steps, life will be much easier. <laughs> And I'm suggesting this because I've done it through, you know, in, through many years and with many different groups of people. I've been working with teachers, but I've been working also with actors, with, um, um, I, sorry, music therapists, with physiotherapists. So, uh, or with no, or adults, normal adults where we're just coming to enjoy an afternoon. So I've noticed that there are some uh, steps that help a lot to, to feel less embarrassed or less shy and the people just join in. Okay, so let's go through each one of these. Oh, do you see that there is a big arrow there? Yes, that arrow says have fun. If people don't have fun through the process and if you don't have fun through the process, then it's not worth it. It always needs to be a playfulness aspect at the bottom of, of this, okay? Right, so we're talking about the first step now, which is voice and movement relationship, okay? So when we want to introduce body percussion to people, we have to think that the difficult thing to do is to sing when we are moving. I can always have a music on the background and just clap my hands and just move, but that's dancing. If I want to do body music, I have to use my voice and also use the movement at the same time. So there is a relationship there that needs to be mm, developed and uh, it can be uh, developed through different steps, okay? So step one, correspondence between text and chant. So the lyrics that I'm using uh, of the song need to be uh, adherent to the chant, so to the rhythm of the uh, of a song so when i'm introducing these to people that are not musicians or children that are not expert musicians yet i better use something some lyrics that are adherent with the strong pulses of my um of my song okay so here i make the example of frere jacques are you sleeping are you sleeping? This is the English version. Then there is a French version. Frère Jacques, Frère Jacques, dormez-vous. Okay. Then there is the Italian. Then there is the Turkish one, which I don't remember now, but I know that you have it as well. Uh, I don't know if you have it in China as well. <laughs> but anyway, um, in th this is just an example to show you that the lyrics, so the words, are completely adherent to the strong pulses. So, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Completely adherent. I'm not singing, are you sleeping? Oh, are you sleeping? Brother John, that's not adherent. Yeah, that was on upbeat all the time. So that is already complicated for children or for people that don't have any musical background or very little musical background. So, but also for musicians, trust me, because sometimes I've seen some musicians that had to do body music, they are maybe uh, expert violinists, but when it comes to music and to singing and moving the body, it's like, oh my God, this is completely different. So start easy, okay? So this is the first step. Second step, correspondence between movement and chant, okay? So I have, are you sleeping again here? And for each um, syllable of the song, I'm doing a movement, okay? So for example, here, if you see the first line, it's the text, are you sleeping? Which is introduced in this table where that is divided into one, e, two, and three, and four, and, okay? So it's, are you sleeping? One, two, three, four. And I clap, one, 
two, three, four. So, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Then I do brother John. So, John lasts two weeks. Yeah? John. That would be like that. So, I have to find a movement for the children or for the adults that helps them to keep these two beats. So if I stomp, it, it's not the same because it's not a long movement. But if I do a high five or high ten, that's last two. Clap, clap, high ten. It's an easy movement, this one, to, for doing, to feel the space, okay? When there is, there is no voice here on the floor, so I can just be, have this long. So, are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John, okay? And you can do it when the children are seated. You can do it with the kids that are moving around the room and then they do the high 10 with someone else or they do it, you know, in meeting with the children. And then there is a third part of the song where there are quavers, so faster rhythm morning bells are ringing yes so morning bells are it's faster here i can find two different situations i can see children that just do this morning bells are ringing <laughs> make a lot of noise because that's what happens when the children are very young they cannot yet coordinate the voice with the hands so it's just morning bells are ringing a bit of a mess there or i have children that are able to coordinate voice and hands morning bells are ringing that could be you know the next step or i have already other children that can feel the beat so they can have independency between the voice and the chest and they can do morning bells are one hit for two voices two two movement of the lips morning these are two here and one on my chest morning bells are yeah so these are children that have already developed a higher level of musicality because they can already understand that there is an underlying beat that is um, detached from what they are producing in their mouth or they can already sim simply uh, in create independency between the two parts of the body okay and then i finish with the right foot and left foot so ding dang dong Okay, so in general, in this piece, I've started from the top part of my body and I went down little by little to the feet. Okay, the feet are always the most complicated part to add. So it, this is very simple, is are you sleeping? Are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John. And I do it, even if I'm in a circle, I can do it brother John with my friends on my right and then brother John on my left, okay? Morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong. But I can also do ding, dang, dong, ding, dang, dong, which is easier, okay? Repeating the same part with the feet is actually easier than adding the clap at the end. Okay, so this was just the second step. So we have now coordinated the movement to the, the voice. Next part, I introduce the, the melody. Okay, and here we can have different ways of teaching the melodies to people. We can decide if it's a very long song to simply play the song many times for them when they are, you know, exploring the space, doing some body, free body percussion or repeating the movements if, it, if they can. But it's important that they have a whole idea of a song, okay? So we don't teach only repetition parts, like, are you sleeping? Repeat, are you sleeping? Brother John, brother John. If I just teach in this way, okay, repeating, uh, they don't have a sense, the whole sense of the music that they are listening to. They don't have a complete idea of a piece. Therefore, um, it's more complicated to feel the flow of this music, okay? And perhaps decide to improvise something. If they are so worried that they have to repeat each part perfectly, the flow will be um, 
a bit more rigid, okay? So my suggestion is to um, teach the song to the children. Um, of course, if you're teaching children that are very young, don't use long songs, 20 seconds maximum. Um, so they can listen to the whole song and then add the body percussion. This is what happened with the pam, 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 param, param, param. They were always exposed to the whole song. I never asked them to learn just one part or the other. And when I've added the body percussion, the melody in their mind was so clear that they could really understand when they had to clap or when they had to put the body music on top of it, okay? Then the last step of this is when you want to create this independency between the voice and the movement. So this is, yeah, very interesting and you know, you, it's a long process that takes uh, us as teachers uh, to practice a lot. We have to practice to become good body music uh, performers, let's say, but also for our students, okay? So body music, it's really like a, a, an instrument. So it takes time and uh, be able to do complicated things, it's, it's not easy. So um, to get these steps, there are several strategies. Use a more complex melody with simple movements. Here I put Minha Pomba Branca, which, is, which was a song that I taught in another webinar. So use a more complex melody with simple movements. Uh, therefore, for example, let's make an example. Um, do you know? Okay, this song is Minha Pomba Branca. It's like that. Minha Pomba Branca. Quero le encontrar. But this is actually quite simple as a melody. Let's do, bu, bu, bu. let's do, you know, si mama ca? Si mama ca, si, or no, this one. Oh, we sang a sanga, oh, we sang a sa. Oh, we sang a sanga, oh, we sang a sa. Oh, we sang a, oh, we sang a sa. So my, my voice sings in the upbeat and sings in different moments. No, it's not always adherent, but I can keep very simple movement. I can do always very easy movement and the voice gets complicated, okay? Or So I can sing complicated things, but the movements are easy. And little by little, I make also the movements more complicated. This is one step to get to independency. Then I can practice the sequence very slow with a metronome, okay? If I have to learn something complicated, I just start very slow, very slow, and then I put the metronome and I go faster, 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 like I would do when I play an instrument. Then I can add upbeat or syncopations kits after learning the main structure of or the motor sequence. So um, let's make another example with a song. Uh, it's a song that is, um, has this rhythm. It's called Calao, Le Calao. The song says, Co, 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 joli calao, ne vol pas trop, 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 fete petit sol. So I can do upbeat on my feet, tum, 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 or this is a rhythm that is not simple to keep. There are syncopation and there is upbeat. Quite, quite straight, but the, the movement is difficult. And then I can add other parts. So I learn the main one, and then I add other things. Okay? First I learn dum, 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 and then I add something extra. Dum, chi, chi, dum, chi, chi, dum. I start with dum, 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 and once I have this in coordination with my voice, pa pa pa, joli calao. Then I add something more, ko ko ko, 
jolly gala. Okay, one step at a time I add parts. Or I divide the song into short sections and I repeat only those for many times. Yes, like you would do with a piano piece, for example. You have to practice a difficult passage, so you just practice that many times. <laughs> and with body percussion is the same. Or I can use motor, um, I can ver verbalize the motor content to understand the movement. So like I did before, doom, 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 doom. Dum chi chi, dum chi chi ta, dum chi chi, dum chi chi ta. I give, um, I can verbalize, okay? So I put a sound with my voice to each of the movements and that helps a lot the memory, okay? And then I can work in small groups or ask each child to try their own part independently, okay? So each of them has the possibility to try the parts that are more complicated. And uh, the last one is that I can actually write the body percussion <laughs> with a notation, um, write it on a, on a board, on a whiteboard, or ask the children to learn how to write body music. And in this sense, perhaps they can see better where there is the um, connection between the parts. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? This is the moment for questions and then we're gonna move on to the song so if you have any questions I'm just gonna be drinking a bit and if you want to write you can also write the questions in the chat so whatever you prefer thanks for the wonderful um, talk may I ask about the the name of the songs that you demonstrated earlier <laughs> can't really yeah, the name, so, uh, well, I've sung many different ones. So I think I started with, well, right, the first one was Frere Jacques, that probably you know it, right? Yeah, okay. I know that. Then the second one that I sung is called Le Calao. Oh, I, can, um, I can teach it, I can write it. Um, I can sing it mind? once. I sing it once uh, and then I can write the, the lyrics in the chat. Yeah, yes, please. Or I can send them in the PDF. So it sounds like that. I learned it from a French teacher, actually. Mm -hmm. so, it's, uh, so I'm not a French speaker, right? So I just know this one. should be the sound that the calao, which is the hornbill, is this big um, uh, bird that lives in Asia and in Africa with a very big, in some parts of Asia and Africa, with a yeah. very big beak. Um, hornbill is called in English. And so kokoko, it's the sound of a bird. Joli calao, beautiful calao. Ne vol pas trop trop trop, don't fly too much, don't fly away. Fait des petites sautes just make little jumps so this is a very good right. song for very young children because they can you know yeah pretend to fly or pretend to jump and then and then it says uh sur un pat on one foot and sur l'autre pat and on the other foot so this is quite fun to do like in this way sur un pat, ta, ta, pat. you know sur un pat, ta, pat. And then he says, let un grand bec à l'air, so um, turn your beak up in the air like a trumpet. Let un grand bec à l'air, comme une trompette, like a trumpet. And, and then you can do it, <laughs> sounds like that, the trumpet. So it's really easy to, when, when, when you're at land. Tell me if you hear me now. Can you still hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I can't hear you now. Mm -hmm. No, that was a silly move. Okay, 
Can you hear me again? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So it, it would be like um, with the children, very young, you would be cock, 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 jolly callao, just dancing. No ball, pack, cock, 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 pet, 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 it's so good. Cock, 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 jolly callao. No ball, pack, cock, 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 pet, pet, it's so good. Sur une patte, sur l'autre patte, sur une patte, sur l'autre patte. Left hand grab a calé comme une trompette. Left hand grab a calé comme une trompette. So this is a very simple game. Even then you can make more complicated, of course. And and I like to do it with this type of rhythm which is co called Coco from Brazil, but yeah, <laughs> so I'm, I'm going to send sure. you the lyrics of this song. And, and then I'm not sure I actually sang, uh, ah, oh, we sang a sanga. It's just another song that I've learned through many years of teaching. I don't even yeah. remember where now. And, um, and I've never managed to find uh, the actual meaning of the, of the lyrics, unfortunately. I tried to find it in many ways, so I'm not even sure that the person I learned mm -hmm. it just invented themselves. <laughs> anyway, sure. the song is Oh, we sang a sanga, oh, we sang a sa. Oh, we sang a sanga, oh, we sang a sa. Oh, we sang a, oh, we sang a sa. Oh, we sang a, oh, we sang a sa. So this is a upbeat here and there which can be complicated so right. oh we sang a sanga oh we sang a sa that's the upbeat oh we mm. sang a sanga oh it starts the voice starts before and for some people it's already tricky so mm. when i sing it to young people i just do oh we sang a sanga oh we sang a sa oh we sang a sanga oh we sang a sa okay <laughs> make it much more easy. Um, right. So really the problem with body percussion is the independency between the voice and the body. Mm. Okay. Oh. Any other questions related Thank to what done? No, no problem. Otherwise I just move to the next stage, which is learning a new song. Yes? Okay, I think we are all ready for the next <laughs> part. So. The songs that we're doing, that we're learning today, it's called Little Music Game. I'm going to write it in the Little Music Game, okay? And it's taken from the very famous song Little Liza Jane, which you can find by Nina Simone, okay? So the original, it's Little Liza Jane, which probably is, um, it's like a um, popular folk song from the Central of America and Nina Simone made a very famous version of this song, okay? <clears throat> and the melody is like... I'm playing G and D, okay? Sol and Re. But you can also do, you know, Do and Sol. It just gets higher. So since it's quite early in the morning, I play G and Re, okay, all major. That was the first part. And then the second part goes. Uh, sorry, D. Ah, C. space in your home now to just go around with me in your house and we're going to learn this song in the way I would teach it to a group of children or to a group of adults okay so I'm gonna play it and everybody walks around their own house their own um, room like trying to keep the beat with the feet okay but also trying to relax a little bit your body okay so stand up wherever you are and 
dance around the house with you, okay? So in this way, you're going to learn the melody, but you're not thinking about learning the melody, okay? Your body is perceiving the song and you're going to learn it naturally. I know a song that you don't know, little eyes of Jay. <laughs> little music game, sorry. I know a song that you don't know, little music game. Shall we play another call, little music game? Who's gonna be the next to go, little music game? I'm gonna be the next to show, little music game. Oh, music, 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 little music game. And now everybody tries with me and we do. song that you don't know I know a song that you don't know and then you guys should sing after me little music game okay so the first part it's a call and respond basically I know a song that you don't know little music game shall we play and have a go little music game okay Who's going to be the next to show? So who's going to be the next person that goes in the middle of a circle and show everybody else what to do? Who's going to be the next to go? And everybody, little music game. And in this case, it's myself showing you. So I say, I'm going to be the next to go. Little music game. Okay? So let's see the lyrics. Mm -mm -mm. Where do I have them? Just give me a sec. Little music game. Ma, ma, ma. Here we go. Share screen. No. No. Just a second. Share screen. There we go. So these are the lyrics of the song. Okay? First part. A, which is the teacher, I know a game that you don't know, or I know a song, I know a song, I know a game, you can decide what you prefer. I know a song that you don't know. Part B, which is the, the group of children, little music game, then the teacher, shall we play and have a go, then the group, little music game, who's gonna be the first to go, when is the first time? And then who's going to be the next to go when it's more repetition? Little music game. And then John, for example, you're going to call one student. John is going to play the song or John is going to be the next to go. Okay. Or everybody is going to play the song. Everybody's going to play the song. You can have different actions, different people going into the circle and at this and the part B little music game and here when there's written all the whole group copies what the person that is in the middle of a circle do okay oh music little music game oh music little mu for example i'm just clicking everybody in the group would click okay so i don't know if eliana is there or if virgo wants to try uh, Evelyn, unfortunately, I know you don't have a screen, but if some of you wants to try, when there is the part 
uh, where somebody needs to show the movement. He would be fun if you guys show us what we have to do and the rest of the group copy, okay? But I don't think that we can do it because I don't know, Eliana, where is it right now? So let's leave it simple for today. Okay, so these are the lyrics. I'm just going to copy them. Hopefully I can. I'm just gonna copy them. Here we go, but you can also take a screenshot of this if you're watching the, the, um, the webinar after, if you're watching the recording, um, you can just simply uh, take a screenshot, okay? But I also sent now all the lyrics in the chat. So let's close now uh, this, and I want to show you a little video, which is a bit more, it's a bit longer, okay? So in this video instead, we are going to observe this game for different ages. Okay, so this is a group of teachers that uh, were participating to one of my courses in Italy. And I have been teaching the song Little Music Vein to them. So here we see how to use this, the song with students four to eight. Exactly like we've done now. So call and respond. Okay, these are the lyrics. I can send you this video. And um, so for these children, you do what's written in the bottom. Call and respond. The teacher sings and the group simply responds by doing some body, body music or different movements, okay? So for children four to eight, keep it simple. Then, let's move forward. In the part B, of course, one person dances in the middle of a group and the group copies. This is what we have already seen in the other, in the other video. Then, what happened with students age 9 to 10? Ready and I don't know that you don't know. You can use drums, okay? You can use drums or chairs or desks, whatever you want. Here we're using the chairs because we didn't have enough <laughs> drums for each participant, okay? For each participant. to call a person. So Federica went into the circle and she created a rhythm. Okay, so she improvised a rhythm and the rest of the group copied that rhythm. So here we're working on improvisation, composition skills, self-confidence, attention, motivation, coordination between voice and uh, movement, musicality skills, teamwork, loads of different things happening in just one exercise, really. I know a song, but you don't know. In a music game, shall we play and have a go? In a music game. with the voice oh music little music game <laughs> oh music little music game it's very tricky she chose a rhythm that was very difficult for the coordination with the voice okay in fact the group was like oh, this is difficult but it's a trial okay it, you try you go and try your own rhythm yeah Squat. And that was perfect for students age 9, 10, 11, 12, even adults, because you've seen that it's not as easy, okay? But at least you can start with children when they are 9 or 10 to do this type of activities. 
You can also do it with younger children if they're very, very musical. But they have to understand very well the rules of the game, so it's easier to do it with children that have already developed some more cognitive skills, okay? Student 10 to 14. So 10 to 14 means adolescents, children that are not children anymore, just, you know, their kids, older kids, and but from 10 and 14 and adults, okay? So each group now, group one is this group here, okay? They have created their own uh, part. Each group learns a different body music rhythm to be played on part one. This one is a, a rhythm that I have created for them. Doom, do doom, doom, do doom, doom, do doom, okay? I created this rhythm for the group and they play it during the part B. Oh, music, rhythm music game. Oh, music, little music game. Okay? This is group number two. Taka taka ta. Taka taka ta. On the chest or on the, there is on the legs. Taka taka ta. Oh, music, little music game. So each group of the circle has a different part. So you're starting working in polyrhythm. Number with their own rhythms. Shall we play and have it go? Little music game. Who's gonna be the next to go? Little music game. Everybody's gonna be the next. Little music game. Ha! Oh, music, little music game. Oh, music, little music game. Oh, music, little music game. Oh, that is called the clock. <laughs> this is quite complicated, but uh, teenagers can do it. In the clock, each group in the part B plays the rhythm of another group. So you have, for example, the group number one, which is gonna play with the part of a group number four. The group number two is gonna play the part of a group number one. So it's like a clock that turns and each group is going to play a different part. Okay, it's a mechanism of a clock. Music game, shall we play and have a go? Little music game. Next to go, little music game. Everybody's gonna be the next. Little music game. Ha! Oh, music, Here is rhythm. Group one now plays group four's rhythm. Okay? Then the group two now plays the group number one rhythm. So each group has different rhythm. They have to copy the other group and then memorize it and turn it, okay? Change it. So this is working a lot on working memories.
you can have for the same activity is that da -da -da -da. Oh. Oh. composition so each group creates a new melody and rhythm using the words of part b so the words of part b are oh music little music game these are the lyrics oh music little game <laughs> okay so each group goes into a different space of the room or goes into a different room and create a new part okay and um, they have to come up with different ideas that uses the lyrics of the second uh, chorus the part b but they can also um you know compose a melody that is different completely different They had 15 minutes, 20 minutes to create it and they created it. These, if you do it with adolescents, they're gonna like it a lot because they can go have their own space to work between themselves and uh, they create, they can get, you know, creative. So it's, it's a very good game to do with all the children. <laughs> The rhythms that I taught them before, the ones of a clock, and then they are starting with their own composition in the part B. The next to go. were sorry to do their body percussion sequence and the other groups were simply um, singing the main melody so we could hear the different songs uh, the different parts you know uh, how how they were sounding together now 
this this is the end so it's always the same just everybody singing together i want to show you another another little video with another group that did exactly the same thing so here you can see another group that did these were not mainly not musicians there were some musicians there but mainly these were teachers okay and this is what they did without singing so each group was doing only their body percussion parts and they were not singing anymore so in that moment we were uh, playing polyrhythms which has a completely different sound and is very interesting because it's just body percussion and in the other moments we were doing simply uh, singing together so polyrhythm and polyphony all together yeah okay so I have finished for today this was the song that I wanted to show you. I'm going to send you the videos of uh, the, these uh, two videos. I, ca I cannot send you the video with the little ones. It's better if I just keep it. Of course, you have a recording, so you can still see it again. Um, happy Mother's Day. <laughs> Thanks, Virgo. <laughs> um, but yes, this idea is that basically um, the, the, the same song can be used in many different ways if you know how the children develop and what um, they need, you know, to get better, basically. It's the point where a mini melody turns. Mm, I'm not sure I understood your question. Is that a question? Is that a question? No, it's not a question. Ah, you like it. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> All right. So, um, I don't know if Eliana and Evelyn are there, if you want to say something, guys, um, or if you have any questions. Thank you so much for the brilliant videos. I loved it. It's just oh. the, my picture and the sound didn't really go together. So, I'm going to ask about this um, Zoom video. Would you yes. share with us later? Yes, yes, yes. So, I will send you the Zoom video and I will send you also the two videos with the teachers. Okay, so you can see, you can watch again the activity with all the different points. And um, I just wanted to tell you guys, if you're interested in doing more of this type of work, that we're going to have some summer courses in London here. And um, from the week of the 15th to the 20th of August, we're going to run different workshops, okay? And uh, the, right. first, the first two days are for teachers that are working with babies and toddlers, so zero to three. Then there is going to be Pedro Consorti, with, which we met yesterday in the webinar that we done yesterday, and he's going to do an amazing work of circled music, improvisation, vocal improvisation, all connected with nonviolent communication. So it's a great workshop. And then I'm going to do two more days of body percussion for children. So my own um, material, my own songs and activities, like this one that we've done today, this type of activity. Um, and right. if, if instead of, of course, you're living very far away, you can <laughs> still participate online because parts of the, of the workshops will be online as well. So I will connect the camera and you can see 
the group working and so yeah. you, you cannot experience the activity of course live mm -hmm. but at least you can see what's happening right in the moment and that helps a lot to understand the activities sure. so yeah if you're interested in participating in this we um, there is a early bird um, discount as well so just in case you want to be there you're going to receive all the information for this course as well and uh, well thanks so much for being here today thank you if you're watching the videos thank after you. and uh, well potentially we'll see you in other situations or keep following each other online evelyn if you if you write to me maybe a message i can find you on the social media or something like that because i'm not sure i saw you on the social medias before okay sure all right um uh, may I ask about yesterday's Zoom video? I, I I sadly missed that one. Would you also share that one? Yes, today, as yeah, soon as I finish fine. this and, and the recording is, is ready, I'm going to share today's and yesterday's webinar. Brilliant. Thank okay. you so much. All right. Nice to see you guys. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank bye. you. Bye, Have bye, a lovely bye. day. Cheers. Bye. 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 Thank you, Tiziana. Thank you. Good luck. Bye. 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 Thanks. Thanks. Thanks.